Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey. Today, we are going to talk about something that I am calling Bacon Gate. That's right. Did you ever think you'd hear that word on a cruise commentary? We've got Bacon Gate in the news. Also, we're going to hear from two cruise line CEOs, major cruise line CEOs, and one of them it's probably going to tick you off a little bit. So stick around for that. You are you're going to get the feels one way or another. And bust out your Cool Runnings VHS tape because you're going to have Jamaica on the brain after we give you some new carnival news. Also, we're going to show you how to tell if your cruise ship is COVID safe. And we have some huge updates on the cruise industry restart as a whole. So let's jump into Bacon Gate. This one is scary for all of us carnivores. We've got cruiseindustrynews.com. August 16th, Carnival Cruise Line will temporarily limit bacon at their buffet fleet-wide. This is terrible. This is terrible news. Bring your own bacon, B-Y-O-B, on your next cruise here. Carnival Cruise Line is temporarily moving to an every-other-day bacon schedule at its Lido buffet fleet-wide. This was announced by the Cruise Line's brand ambassador, John Heald. And we have a quote from John on his Facebook page. We purchase thousands of pieces of bacon every week. And the people that supply us and the cruise industry are having some challenges sourcing bacon for our ships at this moment. According to John Heald, the bacon shortage does not relate to any other pork products such as breakfast ham or sausage. It is planned that the new schedule will only be used for the week starting August 16th. John Heald goes on to say, this is not a cutback. This is a genuine problem that we as a company are having. So, Bacon Gate, it's a real thing. If you are heading on the Mardi Gras or any other carnival cruise this week, BYOB, bring your own bacon. While we're talking about major cruise lines in the U.S., we cannot forget Royal Caribbean. And we have an article from TravelPulse.com written by Donald Wood, August 17th. Royal Caribbean breaks down how cruise line will deal with positive coronavirus cases. Royal Caribbean International President Michael Bailey posted a message on Facebook breaking down how frequently the cruise line experiences positive COVID-19 cases and how each situation is handled. Bailey reports that each ship sailing for Royal Caribbean boasts a vaccination rate of between 90 to 97 percent, with the majority of unvaccinated passengers being too young to safely receive the injection. The cruise line's president revealed that between two to 10 passengers will test positive on average for coronavirus during their pre-voyage screening and they will not be permitted to board the ship. As for guests already on board, there are one to two confirmed cases reportedly on each vessel every week. So that's interesting. We have uh, recently seen some instances on maybe a carnival cruise ship that cases went unreported, people were sort of left in the dark it's nice to see some transparency finally from some of these large companies. So thank you to Royal Caribbean for giving us a little bit of transparency and a little bit of a peek. I think the best thing for the cruise industry right now will be full transparency when we have these problems. So that's where we're gonna transition into the next article here. The next article, is your cruise ship safe? This is from Forbes. This article features a hugely prominent cruise YouTuber. So stick around for that one. We're gonna give him a shout out here in just a second. Forbes, is your cruise ship safe? How to check its COVID-19 status by Irene Levine. If you have already booked a cruise or are in the throes of deciding whether or not to take one, you might be having second thoughts after listening to news reports of COVID outbreaks at sea. The CDC has recently reported that 15 of the 24 ships currently sailing in U.S. waters with paying passengers has experienced outbreaks of the virus on board. Because traveling in the era of COVID is never risk-free, up-to-date information can help travelers make better informed decisions taking into account their personal health status and willingness to take risks. So we are going to look at a CDC tool here, and this article is going to sort of help clarify this in a way that is better than what I would be able to do. 
So we're going to take a look at the CDC color system. What color is your ship? A color-coded system developed by the US CDC can provide helpful information about the COVID-19 status of cruise ships operating or planning to operate within US waters. A table on the CDC website promises to be updated several times a week, assigns each ship a color status, green, orange, yellow, red, or gray. So this link here to this table on CDC's website will be linked below this video. While you're down there, if you never wanna miss an episode like this to stay up to date on things like Bacon Gate or any other news that you need to know about cruising, please subscribe to the Midships channel. We have a big giveaway series that will be kicking off later this week and you have to be subscribed to win. So please give us a like, subscribe, join the family. Let's get back to the article. The color coding is based on surveillance data collected over the previous seven day period, as well as findings of any CDC investigations. When cruise ships notify the CDC of a suspected or confirmed case of coronavirus, the agency determines whether an investigation is needed. So we are now going to take a look at the colors that the CDC is assigning to these ships. So there's a few of them. If your ship is in the green status, it has no COVID cases or COVID-19 like illnesses reported on board. If the ship is orange, there are reported cases that are below the threshold for investigation, which will vary for certain voyages. A yellow status indicates the ship meets the threshold for investigation by the CDC. Red, the ship will be at or above its threshold of CDC cases and gray, the ship has not yet been reviewed for its health and safety protocols. So that will hopefully give you a little insight into the status of the ship that you are sailing on. If you would like to see your ship, please check below and there will be that link to the CDC's color chart. Now let's take a look at the safety ratings on some of these ships. And we have a quote from one of our own, a YouTuber, Tony Barnett of La Lita Loca. He is quoted in this Forbes article. And we'll take a quick read over this, just like I promised. This list is helpful because it shows a number of things. First, it shows all cruise lines are experiencing and managing COVID cases. Second, it gives travelers the ability to look at their specific ship and see what's going on. When it comes to cruising, the more you know, the more comfortable you feel. However, Barnett says, he would like to see a better breakdown of the number of COVID cases relative to the number of passengers and crew on board these ships. Tony says, when you hear there are X number of cases and you don't have a point of reference, you don't know how concerned you should really be. For instance, if the prevalence is less than 1%, that is less troubling than 10%, he said. Currently, it can be hard or downright impossible to trace a COVID case back to its original source, no matter where you contacted it, be it in a hotel, an airplane, restaurant, private party at someone's home, or a cruise ship. Now, that is awesome to hear somebody who is becoming quite the authority in the cruise news sphere. Congratulations to Tony for your quote in Forbes. Great work. Now, we have big news because we, at the end of this month, will have half of the global fleet of cruise ships back on the seas. That is awesome news. I never thought I would be reporting this so soon. I figured we were looking at March of next year before we would hit this type of milestone. But in a cruiseindustrynews.com report from August 17th, they write, cruise industry restart reaches half of the global fleet. As restart operations accelerate around the world, just under half of the entire global cruise fleet is expected to be back in service by the end of August. This data is from the August 2021 edition of the Cruise Ships in Service Report by Cruise Industry News. This report, along with this article, will be linked below. The combined fleets of the nearly 90 active cruise lines currently account for approximately 410 ships, according to the 2022 Global Cruise Ship Index. 
the 190 cruise ships returning to service through August 31st mean approximately half of the world's fleet will be sailing commercially by the end of the month. This is awesome news. This is really great news. Look at how far we have come since the beginning of the dark times in cruising when the shutdown first happened. We have operators like MSC who have now safely been operating paying passengers for over a year. And we can thank them and we can thank these health protocols for enabling us to be able to get back out on the high seas and do it relatively safely and at relatively lower levels of risk. So while we're riding this high, let's take our last happy news article of the day before we really hit home with something that's probably going to grind your gears. So we are going to completely focus on Norwegian for the rest of today's episode. CruiseCritic.com by Chris Gray Faust. Norwegian Cruise Line, Norwegian Gem becomes first fully vaccinated ship to sail from Florida. Norwegian Cruise Line continued its restart August 15th with a notable first with Norwegian Gem. The line became the first cruise ship to sail from Florida with a fully vaccinated passenger and crew cruise. It was a moment that was legally won. In July, the line's parent company, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, sued the state of Florida, which currently bans businesses from requiring people to disclose their COVID-19 vaccination status. The cruise line is adamant that it wants 100% of the people on board to be vaccinated, as opposed to adopting voyages that allow a mix of vaccinated and unvaccinated passengers through October 31st of 2021. I should note that the mixed vaccinated and unvaccinated passenger cruises are following CDC safety and health guidelines. So be aware that even if you are on a fully vaccinated cruise, breakthrough cases are possible. It is no guarantee of safety. Be aware of that. While we are talking about Norwegian, their CEO thinks he knows what's right for you and what you should do to live your life. We're going to read an article about that now. Let me know. Do you agree with Frank Del Rio? Should we all just go ahead and do what he says? All right. From Tampa Bay Times, it's shameful. Norwegian Cruise Line CEO blasts Florida's appeal of vaccine proof ruling. Norwegian set sail Sunday on its first cruise from Florida since the pandemic began with a fully vaccinated ship. But the showdown between Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and the state's multi-billion dollar cruise ship industry is far from over. DeSantis, who outlawed what are known as vaccine passports in the state of Florida, said the state will appeal the ruling against them. And Norwegian Cruise Line CEO Frank Del Rio had some very strong words for the governor. And we have a quote from Frank Del Rio. I mean, come on, give it up. This is a pandemic we're talking about. People are dying every day. Florida now is the epicenter of the epicenter. What does it take for common sense to rule? Del Rio told Yahoo Finance. He told the outlet that Florida's appeal of the vaccine passport rule was beyond bizarre and shameful. Del Rio also questioned the country's leadership at large when it comes to vaccines and controlling the spread of the virus. Quote, our leadership has failed us, Del Rio told Yahoo Finance, questioning how U.S. leaders have not stood up to the realities of this pandemic to require vaccines. So now we have a CEO, a multimillionaire, telling us how to live our lives. How do you feel about this? Does Frank Del Rio know more about how to properly operate during a pandemic than the CDC? Does Frank Del Rio know what's better for you? than you and your doctor? I'm curious, I would really like to know. I totally disagree with Frank Del Rio and I think everybody has a right to choose. If they would like to go on a fully vaccinated cruise, they should have the right to do so. If they would like the right to not receive a vaccination, they should still be allowed to find somewhere to do business and to operate as a citizen. My opinion, maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm out of touch. Let me know below. That's going to do it for today's episode of Midships. However, don't click off yet because we have giveaway news. 
I am sailing out September 30th on MSC Divina. And to celebrate that sailing, I will be giving away every Friday one cruise-related item that you need to have in your cabin every time you cruise. Go ahead and get subscribed. And until next time, we'll see you at Midships. Mm -hmm.